Are you still friends with the people who tried hitting on your daughter? You know, how we're brought up as men, we're brought up to protect and look after. But the truth of the matter is mm. we shouldn't even be protecting because everyone is supposed to be safe. I'm not supposed to be protecting you That's because true. the next guy should know that it's okay for you to walk anyway, anytime. Do you ever respond to the DM? I, unless if someone is a look, um, <laughs> you never know. DMs are DMs. I'm not yet to lie. Okay. Who is the Beyonce of the group? Tepo. <laughs> is there any ex that you consider to have been the one that got away? Welcome to Conversations with Garabo, and I'm your host, Garabo Baloi, and this is where we speak to different people from different walks of life, and they tell us about how they got to where they are today. Today, I have a special guest, one-third of a national treasure, award-winning Penny Whistle group called Quela Tebza, and I'm with Tebza himself, Deboho Lerole. How are you? Well, and yourself? Oh, well, thank you. Wow. The oh, intro. I... <laughs> <laughs> you can play it back. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, 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 I'm happy with it. Oh, yeah. National treasure. <laughs> <laughs> you are a national treasure. Yeah. I, I remember listening to your music when I was a child. I won't say how old. Uh, I was very young <laughs> at the time. Could probably estimate. You must have been seven, five, six, somewhere there. Mm. I don't know. Probably. Mm. Mm. So tell us. Why the penny whistle? That's a very underrated instrument. Sure, it's a it, it's 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 quite a long journey or story. Um, with us, it's more of a, a family treasure type of uh, industry or genre of music. And why? Purely because my father, my uncle are sort of like the soul bearers or the um, the museum. Of, of music or of Quella music. And that's where we got it. We got it from as young as, I think I must have been, sure, probably 10, somewhere there. And my father started teaching me at the age of 12 ish, 13, if I'm not mistaken. And um, they are like the flag bearers, as I've said, the forefathers of the genre. They are the pioneers of the sound itself or of the music. Um, they're one of the guys that they're sort of like a his historical element or big part of South African music or history or culture in South Africa. Mm. And that's the reason and the reason behind is him and mom. Mom obviously with the brains wanted us to um, preserve the sound, to make sure that the sound doesn't fade, doesn't die. And we also, because we were obviously born from a musical family, we felt that it was good for us to take up the instruments and go to war with them. And we also had a score, a score to settle back then. Um, I, I think if you may remember that most of the musicians from back in the 50s were ripped off. And for us at that time, there was a lot of anger and there was a lot of messaging that we wanted to send across or transcend across. And that was purely the idea behind it. And yeah, we got into it and we were coached. It's a long story, like I said, but I'll explain it depending on the questions you're asking me. <laughs> well, I know that the name Gwela Tebza actually came from your mother. Yes, yes. Your mother Correct. decided, no, we're going to use Gwela mm -hmm. and we're going to use Tebza. Yes. Correct. And I can also explain that it doesn't mean me or it's named after me or anything like that. Um, we started at a tender age, like I've explained. And then I think back in 96, I released my first album, which was produced by Mdou Masilel at the time, because uh, I was discovered by Lindelani Mkise at the Shell Road to Fame. And from there, what happened is I started performing by myself, but 
because we had a, a dance group and sort of like, because we used to imitate back in the day, that was the biggest thing. Come weekend, all kids, uh, we, we, our band was shy. I remember the old R&B, old school band. So we used to imitate as shy. And then we had a crew, a dancing crew called Cash Money Brothers. <laughs> so we would imitate and then we would also dance. Um, then what happened is... Um, what kind of dance was it? Like what you see today, okay. what this kind of dance moves that young kids would do for, well, the, the now, let me not say kids, the now culture that they would dance for, my piano and mm, so on and so mm, on. Mm. Back then, it was not even, it was just, just before the fame of Kwaito music, it was mm. more house music, if you knew, if, if you remember. Nice. Um, there was international music that came through Pretoria. As a as a as as a intro into South Africa, and then it went through all the other townships, and I think from Pretoria it went straight to Soweto. So Soweto had the biggest dance groups. I mean, from the days of Sinyaka, um, the days of uh, the group that um, Athama Fukate had called New School. So so Hillbro was like the the hub for all these dance crews. I was young at the time. We couldn't obviously go and compete in in Hillbro mm. because. Our parents were sort of strict. So we ended up in the township, which was Deep Clue for I was brought up. And we used to dance a lot. So we had these two groups. But fast forward, I was then entered into the Shell Road to Fame. I, I won, and then I won a recording contract with Teal Records. But when, when it came to naming the band, my mother then said, you guys need to start performing as a group. I would advise that you bring your dance, dance moves and pair it with mm. what you do. And she, said, she was saying this to me and my brothers. So the group kind of started forming from that end. And when we got our first recording deal with Gallo Records, we didn't have a name. And I think we got our first trip going to Sweden and we needed to name the band. And there was a, an old pianist called Spokes Machian. His first album was titled Quella Spokes. His name was Spokes, so it was titled Quella Spokes because of the genre of music. So the first album that was released was Deboho on his own as a solo project. Mm -hmm. But the title was then Quella Daves because of Quella music and my name is Deboho mm -hmm. and short for Daves. But when we needed to go overseas, my mother then brought back that name and said, I'm going to call this band Quella Daves. And that's how it was named Quella Daves. Mm -hmm. I know it's a long <laughs> story. This. But I did say I've got stories for days, so we can And go. we love to hear them. Yes. Um, at any point in time where you guys became a collective, did you ever think of changing the name to include your brothers? We thought of, we, we did. At some point, I even proposed we call it just Quella. But we, you obviously have advisors and just people around you that you ask random mm -hmm. questions. And quite a lot of people felt that the name had created its own brand and built so much traction around it. And they felt that it was pointless changing the name. What's in the name? Mm -hmm. And I mean, everyone said, when, when, once you say Quella Tebza, we know who mm -hmm. to expect. That's but true. I think even the audience or the fans got to understanding that it wasn't about one specific person, it was a band. Because we, we explained it with several interviews where we were asked why this name, and we, we, we did explain it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I know I fight with my sister pretty much all the time and we don't even work together. So how does that dynamic work, being siblings and working <laughs> together? I feel like every band has got a diva and <laughs> our diva is our younger brother, which is Teppo. Mm -hmm. And there's, so there's, there's, there's Teppo is Beyonce. Yeah, there's, there's always <laughs> back and forth arguments. There's, 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 well, we are a family and at the end of the day, we're the loudest. And a few people have even labeled us Nigerian because we've got the most loudest voices. <laughs> Once we, we get into it, it doesn't end. But what I, I love about my family is the fact that our folks brought us up together from a tender age. Even the fights uh, or the bickering or the arguments, it's mm -hmm. only for a few seconds or a few minutes. 
And again, what's, what's, what's important or key about our arguments is it's progressive and it's about building. You know, we don't just argue for the sake of arguing. We'll argue about the music. We'll argue about what to wear. We'll argue about how to perform. We'll argue about how to get into business, how to tackle the industry and so on and so on. And it's different views and coming from different angles and you know we all don't see from one eye mm. so before it gets to the final part or product mm. there's a lot of back and forth and of arguments course. and all of that but it's it's to build it's not to destroy okay yeah so why the over 10 year long break why the break? sure I, I feel like Taking a break is important for anyone, for, for especially creatives. Once you are in that creative space, um, you have to think, you have to adjust, you have to align. And besides, we had gotten to a point where we had performed almost everywhere. We had won awards, mm -hmm. we had traveled, and we felt that we had hit the roof. And, you know, the, the young generation was coming into the industry or into the space. At times, give them space. Take mm -hmm take away, um, make the people miss you, you know, take away your craft and instead of diluting it and, and messing it up, you'd rather protect it or preserve it in some way. And I felt, um, I feel, well, I feel or we felt that with what we do, it's more of the history of the country, mm. it's, it's the heritage of the country, it's, mm. it's the culture of this nation. And we felt that instead of messing it up, we would rather just uh, preserve it instead of diluting it. And at the same time, there was a lot of backlash coming from the media. There was quite a lot of it. And I think um, we also don't do well with the negative media. And, you know, they say both media is good, negative and positive. But we just felt that for what we do or what we specialize in, we would rather just, you know, let the people miss us. Let us be... Let us exit their industry for some time and go freshen up. Let the people miss us and... The day we decide to come back, it would be a thing of, oh, they're still alive or they're still doing this and, you know. So, so keeping away at times is a bit better than being out there and just messing up your name and so on and so on. But you are slowly making a comeback? Well, uh, yeah, kind of. I'm not too sure. Okay. We, are, we are still... We're still at it. We've been in studio for not just one year, four years. You know, okay. you go into studio because um, I think it's about the music at the end of the day. It's not about who's saying what. And I think we're at that point, we're not making music to make money or to, to economize from it. We're making music for the love of the art and for the love of what we do. And at some point, I think Tupac was one of those guys that created so much music and when he passed on, um, they could still release his music. And I think that's what we're doing. We just keep creating an, as many uh, or as much music as possible for, for those days. You know, one day one of us won't be here and we can still go back to our archives and release music. And, and I think for us, it's, it's all about that. And, ch and sound changes, that's another thing. The mm -hmm. culture changes, you know. Not so long ago, we just came from an era of gom music and now we are currently in the piano phase. Mm -hmm. And it could last for the next 10, 20, 50 years. You, know, you, you never know how long it's going to last. But I believe every 10 years, there's a shift of music and there is new sound that comes into play. And we all follow that sound. So at the moment, it was an era for Ama Piano and for the younger um, uh, audience or the younger people. So what we needed to do as a country or as, as musicians is to embrace them and give them that support. And I think that's what we've been doing. The day we decide to do it, I don't know, we, we, will, we will. But we are in studio and there's, there's nice projects that are coming up. So maybe we could just, you know, try and push that boundary and see if we still got it or not. Is there anyone in particular, like a brother that said, let's go back into studio? Or did you guys all just decide we should keep making music? I'll be honest with you, almost everyone that we come across wishes we did not exit or wishes mm. that we stayed. I mean, um, I lied about not having an interview in a long time. I had recently had one with Chibo Touch, mm. and he, he was like, he doesn't understand what happened, you know, what chased us away from the music industry. And it's kind of hard to explain, but we also needed to explore other avenues because I think we had a lot of influence from also our friends yeah. that was more business-sided or more business-related. And I think we kind of ran with that direction. 
Um, it's also about making money, you know. There is money in the music industry, but not as much as, as in business, unless today, you know, today is a totally different um, uh, conversation. Back in the day, we didn't have any social media, you know. Um, our artists today have got so much um, of exploring and, you know, just connecting with the world, mm -hmm. just like that from the palm of their hands. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, you needed to be on Selima Tunzi, you needed to be on a specific magazine in order for you to capture your audience. Whereas today, it's a completely different conversation. So a lot of people, most of our fans, even family, uh, but I think the most person that is not happy with this decision is our father. And I think one of the reasons we would go back is to also fulfill that. So we see that your nephew has now joined you. Is it part of um, adding new and young blood? Spot on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is that, I mean, I mean, if we're talking about legacy projects, we have to give back to the young or sort of pass on the bait into the young. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And now we're discussing three generations. I mean, from our father, ourselves, mm -hmm. and our nephew. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we do. And maybe his son soon. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> have you never thought of maybe teaching your daughter? I have, but again, it, it goes with interest, you know. Mm. If someone is interested, um, my nephew was fortunate because he spent quite a lot of time with my, with my dad. Well, I almost said grandfather. It's grandfather to him. <laughs> yeah. Spent a lot of time with him, and that's where he got the knowledge, and that's how he got to learn, you know. They were close to one another, and he could teach him. But whereas with my daughter, when she was younger, I was more chasing business, trying to make money, and, and there was no time as such. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and I see one of the journeys, one of the new journeys that you have embarked on included the Act Now organization that fights against the gender-based violence and the femicide that we find ourselves struggling with in South Africa. Do mm -hmm. you want to tell me what inspired that pivotal um, moment? Well, I guess with every individual, be it man or woman, I think out of us there is a sense of responsibility that we need to drive at some point. And we've, I'll speak from my brother's point of view, we've always grown up in a space where there's a few things we wish we could correct. Um, and But I, I believe the older you grow, the more you become resolute and the more you become sensible and the more you feel like it is time to fix some of the things. Uh, I, I've mentioned that we come from Soweto and just in 2020, a young lady by the name of Tsako Fatsopule was murdered and murdered by one of our own. And by that, I mean a male or a boy or a man. And I think at the time, um, a lot of women were sort of calling out men to say, um, besides the trash uh, label, but it was uh, kind of a thing, why aren't you coming to to the fight, or why aren't you joining the, 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 the fight against the schedule of GBV? And at the time, again, we had a lot of female activists that were vocal about what affects them. You know, it's not only GBV, there are a lot of societal ills that sort of uh, cause distract within our communities. And I think we had this conversation with my brothers, and it was a thing of saying, what do we do? We cannot just keep quiet. I mean, when it's time for us to go and perform, we stand out loud and we are heard. And if we keep quiet, we are simply saying it's okay to be mute or it's okay to silence the victims. We then chose that we're going to speak out, we're going to be vocal about that. And it started from a small thing. Um, I think her, her news was uh, made mention of during the week, I think it was early in the week. So I went to my WhatsApp group. I've got a lot of contacts. I pretty much have almost everyone's number in this country. I, I created a group of about 250 people. I think it was maxed by then. Um, this is politicians, ministers, anyone that you can think of. Um, I put all of them in the group. And as I, as I was about to activate the group, my phone went blank. So I was like, what the hell? Anyway, 
second day, I saw, I think, Anne LM daughter talking about men coming to, 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 mm. the, to the forefront mm. and, and fighting. Mm. And I tried the same thing. I tried to do the group again. Again, the same thing happened. And on the Friday, I decided, you know what? I'm going to give focus to this thing. I started a group and it went through and everyone was there. And luckily, I started getting, you know, all the men vocalizing. I mean, the likes of Black Coffee, the likes of Abu Kolen, you know, everyone was like, we are doing this, we're going to do this. And, you know, the way we were so excited, it was a, a movement that started from our WhatsApp group. And the next thing we were marching, the next thing we just wanted, you know, we just wanted to um, working, breathe control into our communities. Um, sadly, we had some female activists attacking us and attacking some of the personalities and also dragging them to say, you know, you were involved in such and such a case mm. and so on and so on. Mm. So, but that still did not stop us. We still moved ahead and we punched ahead. And three years later, we've got this organization. It's still running strong. And it's, it's about correcting a lot of challenges that our communities are faced with. Mm. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, I read a stat that was very recent. Yes. Um, in the first three months of this very year, we had um, reportedly over 15,000 women who have been assaulted by mostly men. And it's just sad that um, we're still dealing with this. And... Um, we need organizations like that so we can get at least one step closer to a better future in this country. Absolutely. So um, I wish you all um, the luck <laughs> in the world. And um, I really hope that all that you try and all that your endeavors when it comes to that organization comes to pass and that more and more people start getting involved, men and women. Um, yes, we want to look more at men because they are part of the problem, but there are women who are just not having an opinion on it of course. and just keeping silent about it as well. So, yeah, I just wanted to pay homage to you for that. Much appreciated. Vic, we, we really don't take any... Um, Karking, we, we don't celebrate it because it's not something that we're supposed mm. to be celebrating. Mm. And it should come naturally, you mm. know, how we're brought up as men, we're brought up to protect and look after. But the truth of the matter is mm. we shouldn't even be protecting because everyone is supposed to be safe. I'm not supposed to be protecting you That's because true. the next guy should know that it's okay for you to walk anyway, anytime, any day of the night or, 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 or yeah, or whenever. So you are meant to be safe. I'm not supposed to be protecting you because we are then, you know, enjoying the fruits of this world and what nature has given to us. And we should be respecting one another. And I think that's the most important thing. But I'm in support of you saying we need to see more faces and a lot of, a lot of people actually coming to the fort and deciding that, you know, um, we are going to abolish the schedule of gender-based violence and femicide. We are going to, you know, um, eradicate so societal ills because societal ills not only affect um, women, they affect the entire community. We're talking about the elderly, mm -hmm. we're talking about the youth, we're talking about women, we're talking about the LGBTQIA+. We're talking about people living with albinism, you know, everyone is affected mm. within the society. You know, there's a lot of um, measures that need to be put out there. There's a lot of solutions that we need to drive out to the communities in order for us to work together. You know, if, if one street in a community works together, we are definitely sure that there is no young girl or woman who is going to be raped or assaulted within that community. And it transcends from a street into the entire community and into the whole country because at the end of the day, we want a thriving South Africa and for South Africa to thrive, we cannot be having uh, criminals walking freely in the streets of our country. We cannot have perpetrators that are just ready to assault someone or abuse someone or rape someone. We cannot have a society like that. And it starts with me, mm. with the next man, with the next brother or with the next father or the next uncle and so on and so on. And not forgetting the younger boys because mm. if we also don't 
alter their mindset or change their behavior or sort of correct their thinking, then who are we? Where are we taking this country? I mean, I speak because I have a daughter. I wish for my daughter to walk freely in the streets, you know, just like how I was brought up. I walked, I walked, I mean, I walked the streets of this country from a tender age up to now. And to this day, I still believe I am free, mm. you know. But now imagine all the women, because speak to any woman any day, they will tell you by 8 p.m. they cannot be driving mm. around Joburg or anywhere or walking around Joburg because of what? It's the fear that is, you know, has, that has taken over this country. And I think what's scarier is that um, it could be me next. Mm. It could be my sister, my cousin. It could literally be anybody. Of course. Um, so, like you said, it starts with the man in the mirror. Yeah. Um, but on a lighter note, yes. I know that you are making dreams come true. Okay. In your reality... <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> in your reality show, yeah. Dream Builders. Yes. You want to tell us more about that? Well, we kind of kept the show. It was a great concept. So mm. the, the, the show was about constructing homes or mm. houses mm. for the elderly, for communities in the country. And while we were still building the concept and all of that, I think we had a, a pilot stage. Mm -hmm. And a few friends of mine worked on the same concept and another group of friends of mine worked <laughs> on the same concept. Mm -hmm. So we kind of took a U10, mm -hmm. but what we are doing now is we are refurbishing what we call safe houses or safe centers okay. or ECD centers, which is more in line with what we do in the space of GBV. Okay. So we refurbish those, we sort of, um, bring programs that um, um, uplift the youth and also economically empower women because mm -hmm. we've got this thing that, you know, if you come from an abuser as a woman, if he beats you up, um, when you go back, you go back because there is a lack in your life, either financial lack mm -hmm. or some sort of lack. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to sort of break that curse mm -hmm. between you and this perpetrator so that you can also be a better person of yourself. If it's qualifications, if it's education, if it's employment, we want to assist with, with that um, uh, sort of 10, 10 key solution to help you, you know, thrive on your own so that you can move on with your life. But with the safe centers as well, we want them to be spaces of, sort of because you go in there you want to heal you know you've been assaulted you've been raped and so on and so on or you have been displaced the idea is go into that space but once you get into that space you need to sort of get the counseling you know psych psychosocial intervention get that help and within six months you need to move but by the time you leave your mindset has to be get up and ready to go and restart your life or you know move on with your life and that's what we're doing so that's where we've sort of repackaged the whole concept and brought it back to the space that we're in. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're still making dreams come true Always. just in a different way. Always. And you're changing lives while doing that. Yes. Always. So there's a fun little new segment that we're trying out called the Hot Pink Seat. Paying homage to the popular game, the Hot Seat. Uh, do you know the Hot Seat? Nah. You don't know the game. Well, uh -uh. they just ask you um, in the game, you're asked questions and you're supposed to answer the questions honestly, no matter how uncomfortable they might be. So we're going to start off with something light and end off with something just a little <laughs> bit hot. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Number one. Okay. Name the most embarrassing moment you've ever had on stage. Um, stage? Sure, I haven't been on stage in a very long time and I don't remember anything embarrassing. Really? I think we've always managed to get rid of embarrassing moments. Like, I don't remember, not even, I've never had pants drop or anything, <laughs> nothing. I've never had booger, nothing. None of those. Okay. It's been clean. Yeah. Okay. I'd be lying if... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then let's go to the next one. Okay. Uh, the second one. What is the craziest DM you've ever received from a fan? <laughs> there is this one fan who is always... I don't know her name, 
and I don't know her face. I've never seen it, but she's been DMing for the past, I think, five years. <laughs> and every time she sends me a message, she's asking me about sexual questions. How was it the last time I had it? <laughs> Have I had any new this, new that? It doesn't stop, and I don't know how to stop them. <laughs> And I actually laugh at them. I've, you know, you know where you've gotten to a point where you just respond to someone and you just laugh it off, and you 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 get to a point where you're even suspecting who might this be, and you're thinking, okay, what if it's that one? What if it's that one? But it's a it's a fine, it's funny DMs that okay. she sends. Do you if ever? It is a she. Mm -hmm. Do you ever respond to the DMs? I do, I respond, I get a lot of requests from people needing help okay. or wanting to be referred. So I check them for those reasons okay. and then I get those, but those I know how to deal with them. Okay. Yeah. Do you respond to those questions? No, I don't. I'm always, I'm very smart. I okay. think it comes with age. I always divert the questions okay. into something. Unless if someone is a look um, <laughs> <laughs> Never know. DMs are DMs. I'm not here to laugh. You know? If okay. someone is nice, I'll probably entertain him. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, you kind of already answered this question, but you can be uh, more specific about it. Okay. Who is the Beyonce of the group? Tepo. <laughs> we Tepo heard that is. earlier. Tepo is with the chains, with the shades, with everything. <laughs> I'm just the guy in black. Mm. I don't want any other color black. I'm happy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you feeling the heat yet? No. Not yet. Okay. Try harder. <laughs> <laughs> are you still friends with the people who tried hitting on your daughter? No, I'm not. Okay. Clean. I, I want nothing to do with them. Um, I guess it's a respect. Um, we have to respect one another. If we call each other friends, there's no way I could be asking your daughter out mm. or making on your daughter or your family member or mm. your girlfriend for that matter, you know? So if you and I are like buddy bosoms, we have to respect one another. Okay. Yeah, so I offload it quite a lot. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, this is the last one. Mm -hmm. You've been doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> is they any ex that you consider to have been the one that got away? Ex. Mm -hmm. It's my recent one, my ex-girlfriend, the last one. Okay. The last ex, yeah. Okay. She's forever my right daughter. Okay. Yeah. She okay. remains one. Okay. Forever. All right. Well, that was good. Congratulations. <laughs> And I have one last thing before you leave. Mm -hmm. Firstly, I want to thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Uh, maybe next time we'll have uh, all three thirds of the National Treasure. Most <laughs> And the new member. Yes. Most So now it should actually be four. Yes. Mm. There is one surprise I have for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bring it up. I'm hoping that you can help me. I want to do a very special outro, um, a little bit different from the usual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody That's got this for me. I wonder who that might. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can help me um, try to make this outro a little more musical. I was about to say, help you with the finger ring. No, it's fine. Carry on. <laughs> um, well, I won't, I won't call it that, but the, the position maybe, um, how should I be holding it? And I'm not sure if you'll be able to manage with those nails, but we'll try. So before I even get close okay. to you, I think okay. that the most important thing is, okay. um, I don't know what they call them. No, there's index. Which one is index? This is index. So index works. Mm -hmm. the, the small ones are? You're and your me. pinkies, uh, I left I school a long time ago. <laughs> pinkies are off, so yes. your pinkies are not working. So okay. you've got these four fingers okay. that are working. Yeah. Obviously, the thumbs are for underneath. Okay, you yeah, to, like To the, give your whistle support, yes. Like that. So that's good. Okay, wait, should, should I? No, 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 the whole Just face here? up. Okay. So the whole face up. Okay. Your first finger, your index finger on the first top hole. Uh, okay. Yes. And okay. so on and so on. So the second and the third. Okay. And then again and on, then, the, on the, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Just like that. Okay. But you have to close up the hole so that there are no leakages or you okay, know, yes, yes, sound yes. escapes or anything um, like that. Okay, I think I got it. And then obviously the next day, next step. So is, I lift up and like that? No, but you can't just lift up. You have, you have to mouth it. You have to put it in your mouth, you know. You've, okay. You're done with fingering, now you're mouthing it. So okay. Follow okay. the steps properly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're sure your holes are still tight. Mm -hmm. So you must give us uh, your lowest key, which is obviously, um, what key is that? I'm not even sure. It's probably it's C D. or D. It's D, Yeah, yes. you must give us key D. And you're not blowing too hard. You're making love to this thing. So no, it's not supposed to give you that sound. It must give you the lowest, the lowest D. There we go. You're almost there. No, that's how you're fighting with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so your hole's tight mm -hmm. and a low D. There we go, that is a low D. Once you've gotten that low D, then you can move from step by step by lifting each finger all the way up. Nope, we start with the bottom finger. Oh, uh, okay. So you you know the do, re, mi, fa, mm -hmm. so, the scale. So that's what we're going to play. We're okay. going to play the scale. So, but each finger comes right after the other. Okay. So you go low D, your holes are not tight. There we go, first finger. How? You're a pro. There you're going. You're going on your own. You don't even need me. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'll try to do a musical outro. Um, <laughs> uh, as usual, mm -hmm. from my heart <laughs> oh, wow. to yours. All love. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Well done. Um, and I hope that you like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. I'm Garabo, and this was Conversations with Garabo. Devo Hollerola, everybody. Thank you. I loved it.